pray with us and just allow the Holy Spirit to speak today into our lives. Father, so thankful today to be able to come and and I do, uh, again, count it an honor and a privilege, Lord, to be able to uh, preach from this holy text. We pray, Father, that you would just uh, do what only you can. I'm humbled to think, Father God, that uh, uh, through words that I might be able to say today, uh, that they would uh, be the changing of lives, Father God. It would be the salvation of souls, uh, Father God, the healing of sick bodies, uh, a deliverance for any that are bound and oppressed, God. And I know that not my word, but it's your word. It's the living word of God. We pray, Father God, may we hear and live today. We pray in the name of Jesus, and we give you all the glory and honor as we come. Hallelujah. Amen. We're in the book of Nehemiah today as we start in the uh, this is a this is a very uh, important uh, scripture, I believe, because it speaks of a, a time of revival for the nation of, of Israel. That we understand at at this time that uh, uh, the the city of Jerusalem was uh, uh, laid waste at the the damage that had been done by the enemy. Uh, the evidences were still very clear. Uh, that nation that uh, used to rejoice and and uh, go to this holy city to uh, to have their feast and their special times of the Lord. Uh, now this nation, the walls were laid flat, uh, the gates were broken down, and what was a, a special habitation, uh, it didn't seem like uh, uh, it was possible that it could ever be rebuilt again. I ministered yesterday morning uh, in the in the men's prayer breakfast about uh, uh, Ezekiel 37. Um, talking about uh, uh, the valley of dry bones. And, and that's really a picture of revival for the church. And, and I believe today that this message is important for, for everybody, but I, I want to speak a little bit about fathers today. But we see that Nehemiah was a man that uh, heard about the condition of his homeland, uh, and God put a burden upon the heart of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was... Uh, was moved. Uh, the Bible says that he sat down and wept when he heard about uh, the condition of his homeland, uh, uh, the place that was one time uh, uh, so uh, uh, so special. It seemed like that the enemy had just ruined it, and he began to get a burden from the Lord. Uh, and God granted Nehemiah great favor in the position and the place that he was at uh, there in uh, serving under the Persians, and God. Uh, uh, granted him uh, a favor with the king, and at the right time, uh, somebody say at the right time, at the right time, uh, Nehemiah went in to talk to the king uh, about uh, his request, uh, about what was on his heart, and just opened his heart to the king. Uh, and God granted him great favor, uh, insomuch that he was able to go back to his homeland. He was able to go back uh, uh, with a desire to rebuild uh, what was laid waste. Uh, he wanted to see uh, the former beauty as it was before. And he went back, not just a, a release, but he went back, uh, amen, with signed letters from the king, uh, uh, granting him uh, special privileges to do the work that was before him. You got to understand that Nehemiah, what he was facing was a a, a great undertaking and uh, to, to be to begin building the walls that had been down you you must know today that that in such a state you could think of it and consider it uh, like rebuilding people's lives and rebuilding a country or rebuilding a, a church uh, amen that is in uh, disrepair but you see not everybody probably believed and we understand as we read the story that Nehemiah uh, faced great opposition during uh, this great uh, construction uh, process uh, and uh, he had to fight the devil to get uh, uh, done what God had put upon his heart to do. But may I encourage you today, don't give up, uh, amen, but stay the course, uh, amen. God is faithful. God can rebuild. I know it may look like an impossible task, uh, the rebuilding of lives, uh, the rebuilding of a 
country. Amen. Turning things around in your life. But don't give up because just like Nehemiah, you can see the thing. You got to see it through to the very end. Amen. You got to make sure that you're in it for the long haul. There'll be some tireless days. There'll be some weeping nights. But if you're faithful to pray and talk to God, God will grant you the victories. So we understand, amen, that Nehemiah, uh, he was a great worker, a, a man that uh, uh, led the people not only just in the rebuilding uh, of the walls, but was r really leading them in a spiritual revival. And he began to organize, uh, amen, and take care of things. Uh, he came up with plans to uh, fight against uh, the opposition that they would face, uh, and Nehemiah went further than that, uh, amen, because he began to organize uh, and to make sure that he appointed gatekeepers to the city, gatekeepers to a city, amen, that at that time had no gates whatsoever. But you see, I preached a series one time on the gates or preached a message on the gates of the city. And friend, they are very significant, probably each one in their own ways. And you see, gates are significant to you and I because gates uh, speak about uh, uh, that uh, they're, they're watched and they're securely protected. It's The entrance therein is, uh, is monitored uh, that someone is making sure. You see, a gate... Uh, as we know it, amen. A gate is a place of access or a place of denial. Say that with me. Say a gate is a place of access or denial. You can allow things in and you can keep other things out. You can't just let anything come into your life, anything into your house, but we've got to keep the gates in our heart. We've got to keep the gates over our heart and our soul. We've got to make sure that we monitor what's coming in and I come today to speak not just about you personally but I wanted to speak a little bit about fathers today because we have a special responsibility in place as a head of a home and leaders in our home to make sure that we watch what comes in and what goes out come on somebody and friend, uh, gates uh, speak about uh, that protection. Oh, we need some Christian families and homes today. Amen. Where we monitor, amen, the things that are coming in. And there, the get, come on. The Bible says that the devil, amen, uh, is sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, goes about like a roaring lion, a lion amen, seeking whom he might devour. Now, friend, you got to know that the enemy of your soul wants to look for an opportunity and a place to gain entrance into your life and into the lives of your family. And Lord God, help us today to understand that we cannot passively serve God, but we must be serious and diligent about what we're doing to make sure that we allow only what is good for us in our lives today. Can I get a witness by anybody? This message today, as I said, it's, it's a message for all. But I want to speak particularly also uh, to our fathers today. You know, dads, you wouldn't let uh, a thief come in, uh, amen, and steal and kill from you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't let uh, an enemy uh, just rob you and pillage your home. I know that there was a day and hour when people... Uh, probably just left their doors unlocked and didn't worry about their windows uh, or the screen uh, open uh, to the atmosphere. But understand today, uh, we're probably living in a different time and, and you've got to uh, keep out uh, intruders, uh, uh, things that would come in to harm you. There are so many gates today that are available with this technological age and we need to monitor and, and through the television, amen, and through all of, man, we've got smartphones, uh, seems like, in every hand in the household, uh, and they uh, seem to be getting younger and younger when they have one at their disposal. And while these can be great tools uh, to help them in, in learning, uh, understand today that there are some things out there that can rob the very souls of our home if we're not careful. 
And friend, we need to make sure that we're not allowing someone to come into our home and kidnap our children. I'm not talking necessarily. Well, I mean, it could be we live and people are, seem to be such evil on every hand today. But friend, uh, under that the enemy is about and he could kidnap the very souls of, of our children while they're laying in their beds at night. Come on, somebody. We got to watch the gates in our home and make sure that we don't allow the enemy, amen, to steal and rob what God has given us. The Bible says in the book of Job chapter 1 verses 4 and 5, it talks about Amen. Job was a good father. I think Job was one that is uh, worthy to, uh, uh, to pattern our lives after, to, to look at what he did and, and, and how he, uh, he served in, in the leadership role in his home. The Bible says in Job's, Job 1, 4, and 5, And his sons went and feasted in their houses, and every one his day, and sent and called for th their, their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so when the day of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And the Bible said, thus did Job continually. Amen. I think we ought to just give uh, the Lord a hand today for Job and for all of the, the godly fathers uh, that are watching and keeping watch uh, over their homes today. Job seen and, and recognized uh, that they may have transgressed and that there may be some things uh, in their life that wasn't right. And, and, and Father Job uh, stood in the gap uh, for his children. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, uh, that he he sanctified them. Uh, that word sanctified there means to clean. He cleansed them. There was a house cleaning that was going on. Uh, Job was worshiping uh, and giving offerings to God on behalf of his children, uh, and he was sanctifying the home. Understand today that uh, your loved ones may not always be living uh, like you'd like to see them live, but don't give up on them. Don't uh, discard. I know that it's tiresome. It's very. It, it, it's a burden that we have to bear at times, but don't give up on your, your children. Don't give up on your spouse. Don't give up, amen, on your family because God can help them. And Lord, help us to stay the course and to make sure that we live the life because I believe the Bible talks about husbands and wives and about the sanctification of one that is not right with God through, I believe, diligent lifestyle, through continual living like God has called you to live. You can wash the dirt plumb out of their life. Help me somebody today. Amen. You can shout it out. Amen. If you serve God, uh, with faithfulness. Amen. Job sets a great standard uh, for, his, for a dad as a gatekeeper. He did his best to protect and to pray over his children. Unfortunately, many of our actions seem to have the exact opposite effect upon them. But, oh, come on, continue to serve God. Make sure that they see Christ in, in a favorable manner in your life. Make sure that you're giving them a God and His glory and His love. Come on, don't slap them every time. You see them with the Dakes Bible or, or a big King James Bible. But make sure that you love them into the kingdom of heaven. Make sure that you wait. Uh, I heard someone say something the other day. Uh, I believe it was uh, on, on a Christian channel, just caught just a little bit of it, but about how that he walked into any situation uh, in, in, in talking about with respect uh, uh, to people and wanting to minister to them, but he walked in the anointing of the Holy Ghost uh, and just began to feel for opportunities uh, uh, to be able to speak love into their life, to be able to speak Jesus into their lives, and God gives us openings as well. 
In the name of Jesus, God opens gates for us uh, that we might bring Jesus in. Are you out there this morning? Come on, give God a praise of glory this morning. You see, there are many things that are coming into our lives, and, and you remember the story about the Trojan horse, and, and this must have been a, a something spectacular. To spectac That sounded like a, like a hillbilly term there. That must have been something great to see, amen, as that big horse was wheeled in. But understand today that not everything that's sparkling, that not everything that is dazzling to the eye is something that is good for you. Know that that in the hold of some of the things that we are given to is corruption and deception. Amen. And it will corrupt our very soul. It will lead us down the wrong path. Amen. We're not playing checkers here today. This is the great game of life. And the souls of men are hanging in the balances. Come on, somebody. Be, be diligent about your service for God. The Bible says, amen, temptation looks good on the outside, but in reality, it's holding a knife to our throat. We got to make sure that we don't give in to these things. The Bible says in Genesis 4 and 7, talking about Cain, you understand about the offerings of Cain and Abel and about how God began to converse with Cain. And it said, if thou doest well... Amen. Shall thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. It, God was talking, I believe, to Cain, and Cain had an opportunity, amen, to change, uh, to fix what was wrong in his life, uh, uh, to make some changes, uh, amen, in his, uh, his, something in Cain's heart uh, was not right, uh, and God talks to us each, doesn't he? I said, does he talk to you? Amen. He speaks to me about the things in my life. Amen. You can say a word and maybe say it just in the wrong way sometimes. And God will speak to you about the things that you do. It bring conviction. I'm so thankful today that in a service like this that we can feel God's presence. I'm glad sometimes that somebody might want to do a Holy Ghost roll or somebody might want to shout and run the aisles that might want to dance before the Lord with all their might. But can I tell you that one of the greatest things the Holy Spirit ever did was convict me of a lifestyle that is wrong. He still talks to to people today and deals with them about the things that are wrong in their life. We see here in the scripture that Cain uh, was what really was going on here. Amen. A sin or Satan. Amen. He comes to knock at our door. But don't be deceived uh, by thinking uh, we can invite sin in and leave Satan outside. If we're given to sin, you're inviting the enemy into your life. I, let me say it again. You can't, you can't be given to sin and leave the devil outside. You've got, to, you've got to close the doors. You've got to bar up the windows. You've got to make sure that you're not inviting things into your life that are caused damage to your heart and your soul. I don't believe probably... When Adam and Eve were given to high treason in the garden and they sinned against God by partaking of that forbidden fruit, I don't think that they thought about what it was going to do on down the road. But understand today that probably what we were seeing here in Cain's life might, could have been, oh, it would have been, it would have been, it would have been uh, cut off if they'd have just never given in to it. Now, I know that. That they played a place in in uh, in in uh, history and and in the lives of, uh, of believers for every believer today that maybe that is unique to them. But understand, I know that we don't cause everything that our children do that to do. But there are sometimes the 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 actions that we take and and uh, the lack of uh, monitoring 
and, and watching over what goes on in our home and in our life uh, and the things that we say can damage people later on. I don't mean to be harsh here this morning and I don't want to put anybody under condemnation, but it is very important for us today to know that some of our actions, uh, uh, they will have... Uh, they will have collateral damage uh, later on in somebody's life. Help me, somebody, today. Can we, can we be real and honest? Live right for God. Make sure that you give your children a great, a great picture of the Lord Jesus Christ because the enemy's looking for a gate to come in. He's looking to a way to get access into your home and into the lives of your children. And, friend, uh, we understand today Amen, that there's good news because a house can be repaired. A house can be cleansed, just like Job back there in the Scripture. Amen, begin to, begin to serve God. Begin to pray. Amen, begin to build an altar in your home and bow before the King of Kings and serve God. Amen, and God will bring blessings in your life. And friend, the Son of God will shine in in the lives of your children as well. How many know what I'm saying today is true? Praise God. Amen. You can sanctify your home. You know, years ago, years ago, uh, God, I, I believe that God speaks. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And I know that we've got to uh, personally, amen, be responsible for the things that God deals with us on, on an individual level. And, and, and some things that God's talking to me about, uh, he may have not talked to you about yet. And some things that I'm convicted of, uh, you may not share uh, those same convictions, but you don't understand uh, we all come from different backgrounds and things. And, and years ago, uh, God just dealt with me, and, 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 and I talked to my wife about it. And, friend, we're trying to build a, a sanctified home. And uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to just choke the life uh, out of out of our, our home or our. But friend, we've got to make sure that we monitor our place. And I want it to be a godly representation, amen, in this world today. And and we just something spoke to me. But we had we had some beautiful a beautiful blue uh, decanter uh, setting up in in the bedroom. Probably we didn't think much about. Probably, it was probably a little dusty sitting up there on top of on top of the cabinet. But it was a whiskey decanter, and, and it was a beautiful piece of glass. Uh, but I talked to her about it. We got rid of it, didn't we? Amen. And you say, why'd you do that? Amen. Well, uh, for me, first of all, understand where I come from. I lived in them hell holes for a long time. Amen. And, and what, I mean, it, it, I, I want nothing to do with it. I don't want any representation of that in my life whatsoever. Amen. You want this is not a sipping uh, saint here. Amen. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that it helps you. That it helps your testimony or your witness. Uh, but for me personally, man, I am not giving in to that kind of lifestyle ever again. I've already lived that life, and I'm not going to live it anymore. Help me, somebody, today. You say, what are you doing? We was just sanctifying our home. We was just making sure that we had everything right. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I believe that we can do that. Satan is not the only one that's knocking at our door because God himself is continually knocking and he wants access. Replace the things that you used to have. Amen. With the things that are good for you today. Come on, somebody. Amen. Make sure you fill your life up with the things of God. Amen. Praise God. You know what? I, I had lots of friends and, and, and things that I hung with back in the old life, and in the old lifestyle. But, friend, uh, I've, I walked away from that. I walked away from those friends. I got you now. I got the church. I've got a family of God. I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world. Amen. We don't have to worry about what we was doing last night. Amen. We, we're not going to wake up with hangovers from, uh, uh, from, the life's, uh, from night's activities. But I want to tell you something. It's a good thing to serve God. God gives us uh, good things in our lives. We need to be smart about what we invite into our world into our lives, don't we? Come on, somebody. 
We live in such a time, church, hear me today, and make sure that you understand that we live in a day and an hour where the world is trying to come in the doors of the church and its teaching and its philosophies, and they're trying to get us to water down the gospel, and they're trying to get us to relax in our service to God. We cannot afford to let up today. We've got to be everything that God's called us to be because we're going to be a great witness in the earth in the last hour. God's going to use you and I to usher in the King of kings and the Lord of lords and God's going to have a holy representation in the world in this day. You say, what else does that mean? It means we're going to walk in the manifest presence of the living God. He's going to show up in our homes. He's going to show up in our lives. He's going to bless us at church. He's going to bless us on the job. He's going to call us to be seen head and shoulders above the rest of them. I know there may have been better picks in life, but friend, God will promote you. Amen. When you promote his kingdom in the name. Oh, give me, give me a, a praise one time to God for just a few minutes. Invite in the right things and God will bless you and make sure you bar up and monitor the gates. Come on, somebody. You know, Nehemiah, they built those walls. It was a fortified place in its day and its hour. Because when the enemies would come back then, they just shut the gates and stay inside. Well, you can't stay in very long if you don't have the right sustenance to keep you there. Years ago when we were still in the storefront, I got a heavy revy in my office one night before Wednesday night service. Uh, it was good because, man, I needed them back then. And God began to speak to me. I seen in the scripture where it talked about the waters of Shiloh. And these waters, these waters had a source that was outside of the city. But you couldn't detect it. Because flowing down under the ground undetected to the natural eye was this spring that was feeding into the city of Jerusalem. Now, friend, you could shut them gates and hide behind them walls, but if you didn't have that life substance, you could not stay there for very long. But right inside of the gates of the city of Jerusalem was an underground spring that surfaced up right there in the midst of that city. You say, why does that excite you so? Oh, I know that maybe, maybe I'm not living in Jerusalem today, but what it is is it's a picture of the believer because the Bible said out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And I know sometimes that we just have to shut ourselves in and we just have to bar the doors and we just have to wait on God. But friend, you can outweigh the devil in your life because God's said, I'll sustain you. Amen. Even though it looks like you're going to be in this for the long haul, there's going to come flowing out of you rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't know I was going to say all that this morning, but you understand. Amen. Psalms 24, 7, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. And the king of glory shall come in. Invite God's presence into your life. In God, invite God, amen, to live and to do, make room for him. Come on, can I, can I make room for the Lord in your busy, hectic lifestyle? Make sure that you chisel out space for God to dwell in your life. Come on, I know that we have so much going on, but we've got to make room for the Lord. Come on, and for God's activity in our life. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Amen. When we open the door to Satan, amen, he removes 
He removes the devil's not wanted signs that are posted outside. And friend, first thing we know, we've got things going on that wouldn't happen otherwise. We, amen, we got to monitor, amen, what our children are given to today. The, the Internet's, it's, it's a tool, but it's a, it's a scary avenue for a child to just be freely given to in today's times. Just, just like, you know, years ago, and we don't, we don't talk as much about it, but I, I believe that, that we got to monitor what they, they watch on the television and, and what music they listen to today. Come on, somebody. We can't, we can't have them be listening to, to things that are corrupting their soul and, and speaking messages into them. Uh, we talked years ago about subliminal messages. Uh, well, we don't, we don't need to even worry about that anymore, hardly. They're saying it outright and on purpose, uh, things that are just detestable and horrible, and we're allowing them to listen to these things today. And, friend, uh, if we don't do something about it, amen, it could, very, it could damn the very souls uh, of our children. So we need to be, we need to be uh, responsible and diligent in our homes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You still love me this morning. Amen. You still love Jesus. That's more important. Amen. Praise God. Amen. As our praise team gathers this morning, as we, we prepare to, to close in this service this morning, understand that the first and foremost, uh, we need to make sure that we've allowed God into our lives and that he's in our heart and that we are serving God with gladness today and, and make sure, come on, don't, don't give, don't give your family a picture of, of, of drudgery, of going and serving God in your life, but, but keep it fresh, keep it fresh, serve God, make sure that you're maintaining a prayer life Amen. Make sure that you're giving to the, to the Word of God. Amen. Uh, man, maintain worship in your life. Uh, uh, build an altar in your home. Have a relationship with God. Amen. That is conducive. Amen. With a sanctified home. Live for God. Love Him. Amen. He's special. And I believe today, amen, if we'd allowed things in our lives that maybe we need to repent and just ask Him, God, would you put us on track, Lord? God, I pray that you'd help me. Just help me, Lord Jesus, to get things in order, to get my house in order, but to start over, God, to start over in the name of Jesus. Come on, who's the leader in that home? Take your place. Take your place in the kingdom of heaven. Sanctify that home. Wash it. Cleanse it. Amen. My wife, a few weeks back, she took on that task of washing all the windows in the house. And uh, I was busy. But I tell you what, it sure looks better now. And you can see things clearer because the glass is clean. And friend, we need to wash until we can see things in a clear light, amen, in our life. Praise God, sanctify, sanctify. Oh, God, help us to hear today. And there's a devil loose out there, amen, and he wants to ravage. He wants to ravage your life and the lives of your children. Make sure that you're monitoring the gates. And make sure the walls are up and the gates are shut. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And you're a gatekeeper in your life. You're a gatekeeper in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Would you just open your heart to him today? Amen. Would you just lift up your, your life to him today? In the name of Jesus, just welcome him in. Fresh and new today. I feel the Holy Spirit in our house this morning. Amen. We sanctify you, Lord, in this house, God. We want to make sure that this church... Father, God is everything that you've called it to be, God. I pray, help me as a father of this house, God.
to make sure that the gates are monitored, Lord God, that we're watching uh, faithfully, God, over the activities that we're given to, to the things, the goings on in this place, God. God, may it be your work and your work alone. Oh, God, we invoke your presence. Come right now, Lord Jesus. Bless through this time. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Come on, pray. Let's just allow God, amen, to touch a life today. Let's just allow God today to transform somebody. He wants to refresh somebody. He wants to encourage somebody that's downtrodden today. Oh, let him help us in his place. In the name of Jesus. Come on, there's a healer in the house this morning. And the Savior's in the house today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If there's a heart that's away from God today, oh, I submit, this time is for you. This time is for God's activity. He wants to help you around these altars this morning. If you want to come in Jesus' name, come on, stand with us. Let our altar workers come. Amen. Let's be given to His work as they sing today. Hallelujah. Come on, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you need something from God today, He's here. He's here. He's here in the name of Jesus. If you haven't made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you can come right now. I'll lead you in a prayer. Make your way up front this morning. Come on, make your way. Make your way into God's presence today. Make your way, amen, to the presence of the Father. Come stand before Him. He's here to help you this morning. Do you know Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Do you need to be washed? Do you need to be cleansed? Oh, come on. Come on in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let him have his way. Let him have his way. Come on, everybody, worship him today. Worship him together today. Yes, Lord Jesus, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. How great. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, let him touch you. Let him touch you. Let him encourage you today. Hallelujah. If you need prayer help, come with we'll stand with you this morning. Father, we declare a good report, Lord Jesus. A good report, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Lord, you're our healer. You're our healer, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. We declare it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done in the name of Jesus. It's done in the name of Jesus. It's done in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you need help this morning? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you today. Lord, we come to lay hands on the sick this morning. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. 
Come on, lift your hands this way this morning. We just pray, Father God. We come against torments of the enemy today, Father God. We come against the enemy that would try to steal our health in the name of Jesus, Father God. We come today to close the door, to shut the gates in the name of Jesus, Father. We open today to you, Father. Bring healing today. Let healing grace flow right here and right now in the name of Jesus. Touch her now, Lord God. Touch her now, Lord God. Yes, healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord God. Jesus, you're a healer. We praise you today. How great is our God. Yes, give him glory. Hallelujah. Someone else this morning. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, magnify him together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. You need something this morning. He said, Lord, we love you. Thank you, Father. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I need your touch. I need your touch, Lord God. We need your touch, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Your name is El Shaddai. Oh, you're the God that's more than enough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, right now, right here, Lord God. Yes, we pray. Oh, let that healing oil flow today. Let it flow today, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we pray. Repair. Repair, Father God. Restore. Restore in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Amen. I just hear the Lord saying he wants to touch. He's going to he's going to repair. Amen. Even nerve endings that are damaged in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray. We pray in Jesus name. We pray in Jesus name. Yes, Lord God. Right here right now, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you touch even these ribs today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we pray bless Sister Cheryl today, Lord. We pray healing to her back. We pray, Father God, that you'd raise her up. That you raise her up in Jesus' name. Oh, you're the life giver. We pray, Father God, give new life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray for Billy, uh, Billy Spradlin today. We pray in the name of Jesus. We stand on your word, Father God. And Lord God, I thank you right now. Lord, it looked impossible. Oh, God, but we believe. Amen. All oh, the things, things with man, 
are impossible. But, oh, God, we know, Father, all things are possible to them that believe. We stand. We pray, Father God, that you'd restore, that you'd restore, that you'd bring health. We bind this infection around his heart. We pray, Father God, oh, raise him up, bring him safe through. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Touch him now, Lord God. Touch him now, Lord God. So much power. Thank you, Lord. God, I pray for my mother. I pray in Jesus' name that you touch the mother. That you be with her, Father God. Oh, we pray, Lord God. Lord, let your handiwork be done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, bless her. Bless her, Father God. Touch her eyes, Lord God. Touch her eyes, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh, you're a restorer of sight to the blind. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. Thank you, there Jesus. Is Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Healing. pray for Jordan. We pray, Lord Jesus, all that you safeguard. God, we're building a hedge. We're building a hedge of protection. We're standing on your word, Father God. We're coming against, Lord Jesus. We're barring. Oh, God, we're shutting the gate today. We're shutting the gate today, Father God. Lord, we demand, we command, Lord, every spirit of darkness to go. Lord Jesus, we pray the doors to be shut. Father God, we pray, Father, that you'd speak to his heart. Oh, we pray, bring him out. Bring him out, Father God of dark. Bring him out, Father God of darkness, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, watch over him, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, you know where he's at. You know where he's at. We pray, Father, safe keeping of his soul in the name of Jesus. Bring it back to his remembrance, Father God, like you spoke to the prodigal son. Speak to his heart, Lord God. Bring him in in Jesus' name. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord God. Shut the gates. Shut the gates. So much power oh, Lord. in the name yes, of hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, give God so praise. Power in the name of oh, Jesus. yes. Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yes, break, break every, every chain. chain. Break Amen. Every chain. Come on, brother. Break We're going to break the chains chain. through prayer. We're going to break the chains through holy living in the name of Jesus. We're going to stand against the powers of darkness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's deliverance in the name of our Jesus. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. deliverance in the name of Jesus. Lord, yes, Lord. Jesus, he'll break every chain. Yes. Break every chain, break every chain, every chain. Oh, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Bless the Lord on my soul and all that's within me. 
Bless his holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Break Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Lord, break every chain. 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 Services tonight at 6. God bless you and go with you and keep you. Amen. Watch over you. Amen. As you go his way in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands and be friendly today.